So I've got the pleasure of being sat in the kitchen of um, filmmaker Grant G, whose film Joy Division is playing Friday the 30th of November at 6.30 at the Duke of York. Grant is well known for his seminal documentary uh, Meeting People Is Easy on Radiohead and has done many promos and worked as a cinematographer as well as a director and producer on many projects. Mm -hmm. So welcome to the Cine City podcast, Grant. Thank you very much. I like to start my interviews off kind of slightly to the side by asking, you know, how did you get to this position? You know, what is it that made you become a filmmaker, you know, cinematographer, director? I always liked playing with cameras, simply enough. Never had any particular ambitions for anything to do with film or video. But I always liked playing with cameras. And then sort of in my mid-twenties, I ended up as a runner in one of the uh, edit suites in London, you know, without knowing quite what I was doing or what this place was about. I was just making the tea... And it was a better job than delivering booze for odd bins um, in Soho at the time. Um, and I ended up being a runner on a really interesting TV production that had lots of archive footage and sort of little art films come in. And after I'd stopped making the tea, I, I sort of got put in charge of dubbing a lot of this stuff that came in. And I remember just seeing some films shot on a Bolex 16mm camera that were put together in ways that I'd never seen anything on television before or anything at the cinema before, and it just seems so direct and true and sort of beautiful, really, some of these things. A filmmaker called Warren Sombert was really the inspiration. And it was just a thing of, you know, shoot it myself. Then I got hold of a Super 8 camera and just used to wander around town smoking and taking photos of things with my Super 8 camera and then projecting it on the wall at home, playing music. Then I started getting jobs as a cameraman, a sort of B unit on music videos, to the extent where I could eventually, after a few years, ha had enough cool shots to make a show reel. And then once you've got a show reel, you can start touting yourself, and the jobs got a bit bigger and a bit bigger, and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I'm wondering how you find it, because I know that experimental filmmaking is something that's very close to your heart from, back from those... Um, you know, super eight days of wandering around and kind of just shooting whatever you feel like, which doesn't necessarily translate very well into, you know, paying gigs. You've managed to do it, obviously, with um, some of the, like, we mentioned the Radiohead documentary. But, you know, how have you found that with your career? Have you almost had to hold yourself back from the things that you want to do so that you can get those commissions that pay? Um, yeah, if I could talk about that for about three days and end up weeping. Um, what helped, especially early on, was learning how to shoot, load and shoot 16mm cameras, because as soon as you could do that, you could put stuff that could cut in with the main unit on a pop video. So all of a sudden, I could turn up with a little Bolex kit that I'd bought for 700 quid and earn 350 quid a day hanging around the edges of the promo shoot, taking pictures, which, you know, quality-wise, weren't far off what the main unit was shooting with Aries and da-da-da. Mm -hmm. And so there were a few directors who picked up on this, and I started getting quite a lot of work, I say, because it's very economical. And because it was 16 mil, people started treating you kind of professionally, and also the shots that I could get to put on my reel afterwards started looking good, because they'd all been telecine properly at the best suites. That really helped. As far as experimental stuff versus paying gigs, it's really hard. I mean, I've been sort of directing for about 15 years now, I guess. And I've just come to the conclusion that the stuff that I really want to do has got to be done for love and virtually no money at all, even though it might take a year of your time. Mm -hmm. So I, I've, I've, all the way along, while making these music films, I've always had another strand of making short, more or less sometimes more, sometimes less, experimental documentaries about all kinds of things and just have to accept, you know, if I've got a little bit of money in the bank, I can put a grand or two towards one of these short films that gets shown at a festival or you just send it out to people you think might be interested. And other than that, you're just trying to, when you do get a more commercial thing which people are going to put quite a lot of money into, like this Joy Division film, you know that first and foremost people are going to hold on to the story so you concentrate on the story and then hang as many of the sort of techniques around that story that have learned from more experimental stuff as possible. Looking through the work that you've done, you know, even just down to the to the promos, you seem to be kind of fascinated or at least have a very strong interest in performance. So, you know, I'm thinking about, you know, like the Idiotech 
video, which is just performance, you know, fantastically shot. And then, you know, you've got the Fry My Little Brains promo as well. And so you've got this experimental background, so you could be off shooting anything, but you seem to quite often come back to performance and the band's performing. You do the same with the Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds promo yeah, as well. I've forgotten I did that. Because <laughs> um, I don't have many ideas, really, is why I come back to performance. Um, one thing is that it's kind of a reaction against the way that promos are seen as a stepping stone, a stepping stone to adverts, and will treat a band, will treat music like they will treat a product when they get to do adverts. Mm -hmm. And there's a great pressure to come up with this great idea for a pop video, and that's coming from the commissioners, and it's the culture right through, really. And as much as that, I just kind of react against that and say, no, it's a band playing, film the band playing, do something interesting based around that. Mm -hmm. Especially if it's a band rather than an individual artist or somebody more experimental. The real energy, the best experience you ever have off them is when you've got that direct link towards them playing as a band, you watching. And it's trying and usually failing to convey some of that energy rather than directorial spin. Mm -hmm. I know that you were invited onto the Joy Division project, you know, you got a call and you were asked to direct it. Uh, I'm wondering how that way of working when, you know, it's a commission, can you do this and you say yes, compares to, you know, I'm not sure how you came onto the Radiohead project, but I know that the band have said you had complete freedom and basically that film showing about the hells of touring and those endless questions. But I'm presuming that the situation would be different for this Joy Division because the people who bring you on have an agenda in the first place. So how does that dynamic work? Um, the dynamic works differently in each case, and it depends where the money's coming from, where the thing will eventually be distributed, the actual characters who are involved in the production at every level, you know, what your relationship is going to be with them. The Radiohead one, because of what Radiohead are like, i.e. when they decide on a project, nobody messes with them. That's almost part of their operating principles. Mm -hmm. It's like, we make a creative decision. After that, whoever we're working with has complete freedom. They will come in and chip in, but they respect that. This one was different in that <clears throat> it was initiated by a couple of producers, one of whom was part of the management of New Order back in the late 80s and 90s, I believe. They investigated and said the market could sustain a feature like Joy Division documentary that could get theatrical release because they knew that control was likely to happen. And so it was born kind of out of control? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I mean, I'm not, this is before I was even involved. I think the thing was, they knew that control was almost certainly going to happen. They knew that it was going to be based on Deborah's book, quite closely, Deborah Curtis's book. And then the band New Order, the remaining members of Joy Division, had always resisted having a documentary made about them. I think people have tried numerous times before and I think it was put to them that if this film Control was going to be based on Deborah's book in which the band were given very little time, space and when they were referred to it wasn't very glowingly mm -hmm. um, it was kind of like, look, if you ever want to do a film about your band then now is the time to do it and they all agreed and so once they had the band's kind of signatures saying they would participate in this. I think things started rolling on the documentary. And they got John Savage in, who's a, you know one of our great pop culture writers. And he kind of blocked out a very basic but very cool sort of one-page proposal so that the producer could take around to people who may never have heard about his band and say, look, this is how a documentary about Joy Division could go. And that was what circulated for a while. And they brought me on. You asked about how the dynamic worked. It's different in every job. And this one, I was brought on relatively late. And because it was relatively high budget for a documentary and because the money was coming from private finance, I mean, straight out of the producer's pockets, mm -hmm. it's a much more direct relationship than if you're hired by a record company. And I felt personally, I mean, this might just be a personal failing, much more obliged to talk things through with the producers to check things yeah to have everyone involved in creative decisions give everyone a chance to question put their point of view much more so than if it had been money that had come from a record company or an, any other impersonal source this mm. is very and, and it all those things do change the way jobs are approached yeah i know when we were speaking before we started rolling you know you were saying that the joy division film doesn't really feel like one of those auteur pieces although from my point of view watching it 
and looking at the style of the film, I 